another very important class that is ulcers so please pay attention here now in the beginning okay let us uh, define what is ulcer so please have a look here so this is not a new thing for you i'm sure about it uh, but still it's an important topic in surgery now ulcer is the break in the continuity of an epithelial surface that may be skin or mucous membrane this is an important point break in the continuity of an epithelial surface now one thing i like to add here along with the break of the continuity of epithelial surface there is a definite loss of the tissue from that area okay so let me write that for you here loss of tissue from that site now why i am including this uh, you know part here sometimes there is a term which is known as erosion okay. erosion okay and there is a term known as ulcer so what is the difference between them erosion is a very superficial break in the continuity of an epithelial surface it is not deeper and from erosion okay the uh, definite tissue from there is not lost but ulcer there is definite loss of tissue from that site ulcer is characterized by progressive destruction due to molecular death or trauma of the surface epithelium and a granulation tissue base this can only happen after the tissue is lost okay see this because of the destruction because of the trauma the tissue is lost from there and that lost tissue is replaced by granulation tissue granulation tissue in the last class also we talked about this this is a earlier scar earlier scar i'm making it very easy for you it is actually made up of fibrous tissue blood vessels and inflammatory cells all of these combined together to form granulation tissue but what is the purpose of this granulation tissue it will heal that area it is a process of healing so ultimately okay when bigger tissue is lost there will be formation of a scar so granulation tissue is immature scar so let's move on everybody know the definition of ulcer now okay now share another part of this class is what are the parts of an ulcer very important one in the exam we love to ask this type of questions now ulcer has got different parts now you can see right here in this picture this is called margin of the ulcer margin this is called edge of the ulcer here is the floor of the ulcer and this is called base of the ulcer so margin of the ulcer edge of the ulcer floor of the ulcer and base of the ulcer so let's elaborate these one after other the first is margin now see this this is the margin everyone can understand now it may be regular or irregular or it may be rounded or oval now, regular or irregular is the important one this is the margin now what are the you know types of edges now see here okay, so let me use the pointer here see look at this edge okay this is called sloping edge it it forms a slope there isn't it it's called sloping edge this is called punched out edge just like a punching machine has been used okay to form this ulcer so punched out edge straight down going edges this is undermined edge so undermined edge means okay at the top it looks a bit of smaller opening but when i go deeper you know the edges are going wider see here they are quite nearer to each other at the opening but at the base they are quite away from each other so it is going laterally this is called undermined edge another is raised and beaded edge now this is a beaded edge you can clearly see here okay beaded we can 
see or palpate or feel it. Palpation is more important than you know inspection here. And this is called everted edge or rolling over edge. Everted or rolling over edges. Now all of these are very important for you from the MCQ point of view because different you know pathology or different you know diseases they produce this type of ulcer. Okay this type of ulcer. Now sloping is, is mainly formed by healing ulcer. For example, a traumatic ulcer is there and it, it is in the state of healing. So the sloping type of age is commonly seen. Punched out, okay, punched out age okay, is seen. Any, any, any guess? Like for example, in peptic ulcer disease, in a duodenal ulcer or gastric ulcer, this punched out age can be seen especially in the duodenal also it's just like a you know one small hole made by a punching machine undermined is is a typical feature of tuberculosis okay it's a tubercular ulcer raised and beaded is is mainly seen in uh, basal cell carcinoma basal cell carcinoma i'll talk about this everything okay in the coming slide basal cell carcinoma is a type of skin cancer and this everted, okay, or rolled over edges is seen in another type of skin cancer, which is known as squamous cell carcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma, also known as epithelioma. So these are the different examples. In detail, we'll talk about in the next slide. Now see here. Let's talk about slightly in detail about the ages the important information i've already provided to you now see here uh, the one which connects floor of the ulcer to the margin is called the edge now from that picture every student know what is the edge so let me go back once again this is the margin of the ulcer this is the okay uh, floor of the ulcer so this connecting part is called the edge. Now, so one is a, first is sloping edge. That what we are seeing just now. It is seen in a healing ulcer. So it is seen in healing ulcer. Now let me underline this important point. So its inner part is red. Okay, red means it's a healthy granulation tissue. Now I already told you granulation tissue is an immature type of scar it's early phase of healing process and when i see it red that means it's a healthy type of granulation tissue i don't need to worry much its outer part is white due to scar or fibrous tissue this is a part of healing also and its middle part is blue due to epithelial proliferation so all this signify this ulcer is healing so this is a good sign. So second type of age is undermined age. Already talked about this is seen in tuberculosis. So it is a, a tuberculous ulcer. Now what is undermined age? See here, the disease process advances in deeper plane. It is going deeper and deeper. It is going away or laterally near the floor. Whereas skin or epidermis proliferates inward making the opening narrower than the floor this is in tuberculosis ulcer now the third okay type of age is called punched out age punched out age okay one good example and the easier example i already gave to you like a peptic ulcer okay that's a very a uh, typical or familiar example for the students but so many other come here uh, as an example like in a gummatous ulcer now gamma is seen in tertiary syphilis so let me write that for you so that you won't forget later on this is seen in tertiary stage of syphilis and this gamma is a type of granuloma 
just like in tubercular granuloma in syphilis we call it gamma okay but there is no caseous necrosis at the center and trophic ulcer now another important term in the clinical medicine trophic ulcer this trophic ulcer is a pressure ulcer okay now see here this is very important concept it's a pressure ulcer caused by external trauma to a part of the body that is in poor condition or that is already disease it has some predisposing factor there like vascular insufficiency or ischemia or loss of afferent nerve fiber now what is afferent nerve fiber what is that which which uh, transfers signal yes. away from the brain okay more nerve now afferent and efferent okay very easy term for you afferent and efferent a to a is towards the brain toward. exactly a is towards the brain means it's a sensory fiber afferent means sensory fiber efferent means motor they take sensation from the brain or command i should say command from the brain towards the periphery this is motor or efferent in this case they are sensory fiber now listen carefully here there are so many diseases which preferentially damages the sensory nerve fiber or sometimes the whole a uh, peripheral nerve is damaged both motor as well as sensory fibers are gone a few the example we can uh, quickly take here is diabetes remember in the late stages of diabetes there is a complication known as diabetic neuropathy neuropathy means damage of the nerve so trophic ulcer is very common in diabetes i know this leprosy leprosy is a disease which is caused by mycobacterium lepra but the target organs or target tissues are nerves especially the peripheral nerve so similar type of ulcer can be seen in leprosy also so this is a bit of uh, information for you and regarding the syphilis the pathophysiology which is involved in the formation of this punched out age ulcer is called end arteritis and arteritis now what do you mean by that listen uh, you know pay attention here end arteritis means sometimes we have only one blood vessel which is supplying that particular area and if that blood vessel is thrombosed okay or inflamed there is no more blood blood su circulation there so that area will develop ischemia and necrosis this particular phenomena is called end arteritis remember in tertiary syphilis there is one condition known as cardiovascular syphilis and because of this cardiovascular syphilis the aortic aneurysm is very common this aortic aneurysm is also caused by end arteritis pathophysiology let's move on some other uh, types of ages now it's a raised and beaded ages now okay in uh, when we inspect it it looks like a pearly white is seen in rodent ulcer now rodent ulcer is the term for advanced case of basal cell carcinoma rodent ulcer is a advanced case of basal cell carcinoma now this rodent ulcer looks you know uh, not good from outside there is extensive damage or loss of the tissue from there and the a margin is also very irregular this is a local invasion by this malignancy known as basal cell carcinoma one of the most common skin cancer all over the world basal cell carcinoma now any student can can tell me uh, from where this basal cell carcinoma terms have come what do you mean by basal cell on skin where, where are they yes anyone Uh, so they happen sir on the outermost layer of the skin sir okay okay anybody else Epi epidermis on the epid now this is a little bit you know a difficult question probably for you so please pay attention let me explain this myself uh, our skin is divided into two layer 
outer epidermis and inner dermis now epidermis has got four layer or five layer according to the thin skin or thick skin okay the basal layer is called stratum basal stratum basal now see that basal term is there stratum basal that's why if any malignancy arises from those basal cells of epidermis this is known as basal cell carcinoma this is the commonest skin cancer all over the world so these are very important mcq point for you okay so don't forget now this beaded appearance are due to proliferating active cells because this is a malignant cell or malignant tumor so this is a quite a you know non type of process now one more which is very important from the exam point of view is evolved edge or rolled out edge it is seen in a carcinomatous ulcer due to spill of the proliferating malignant tissue over the normal skin because they are rapidly proliferating the normal tissue cannot you know uh, compete with them so they spill over on the normal skin so they overhang themselves there and that is known as evolted edge and this is very typically seen in squamous cell carcinoma so let me write it for you squamous okay squamous cell carcinoma of skin see squamous cell carcinoma of the skin another term for this is epithelioma epithelioma okay very commonly used term so these are some of the important information so let's move on now now after discussing those edges okay let's talk about what is floor and what is the base now floor means it is the area which is seen when we look into the ulcer okay it is seen we cannot see the base remember that base is the area where ulcer rest but we can see the floor and usually this floor contain discharge Okay, granulation tissue or slough. Now, slough means some of the tissues are shedded there, isn't it, from the edge or from the floor itself. This is called slough. Usually, these are dead tissues. Granulation tissue we already discussed, and discharge. Sometimes there is pus, sometimes there is blood, sometimes there is some serous type of fluid. It depends on what is the cause of the ulcer. So, floor is the area. which is seen okay when we look into the ulcer and base is the one on which ulcer rest so it may be bony tissue or soft tissue now you all know what are the parts of the ulcer okay margin edge floor and the base now what are the okay predisposing factor sorry what are the predisposing factor Uh, sorry for this uh, you know quality of the slide here let me explain everything what are the predisposing factor for the ulcer formation so let me give you a good concept here okay first now listen carefully in a normal area the ulcer is not formed so we should have some uh, predisposing factor or uh, etiology one of the commonest etiology is trauma trauma okay trauma or traumatic type of ulcer very common like a cut a big type of laceration another one maybe ischemia now how ischemia causes ulcer can anybody explain to me how so in ischemia there is necrosis uh, lack of necrosis. blood no supply blood. of oxygen due to which tissues die oh. die exactly. loss of bl blood loss cell cell death necrosis occurs good blood supply that is good supply cell causes the cell death on in, in that area which which relatively towards sir exactly and sir, yes yes please when, yeah. when yeah. necrosed area is sloughed off uh, then it produces ulcer exactly all of you are answering 
Okay, excellently. Okay, now see here. Ischemia means a lack of blood supply, so that tissue ultimately die. After death, it just sloughs off. You know, it just separates from that area. So that is loss of tissue now, and that will convert into ulcer. Very very easy explanation. So any area in our body, if it you know dies because of ischemia, there is formation of the ulcer. Now another one is gravity, is the effect of gravity, and that effect of gravity is called gravitational ulcer, or uh, this is very very commonly seen in varicose vein. Now you all know what is varicose vein. Varicose vein means dilated and tortuous vein, especially present in the lower limb, around the ankle area or around the you know uh, ankle joint area. Okay, so because of prolonged standing. if somebody is already having those varicose vein there is high chance of ulcer formation we can call them varicose ulcer okay or gravitational ulcer now another is trophic ulcer i already talked about this trophic ulcer are mainly caused by ischemia again or because of neuronal damage like diabetic ulcer like leprotic ulcer like any peripheral nerves which are damaged can also lead to trophic ulcer so so many important types can be there okay so like that you can handle now let's classify uh, these ulcers so according to the classification of ulcer the first is pathological classification now all of you please see here and second is a clinical classification so let's uh, uh, go through these uh, lines first and then uh, explain about them further regarding the pathological classification they are non specific ulcer they are specific ulcer and they are malignant ulcer and regarding the clinical classification we can classify them under spreading type ulcer healing type ulcer and a chronic ulcer also known as callous ulcer so spreading means it is not it is not healing it is rather spreading or getting more severe healing it is coming back towards the normal state and chronic it is it is a continuous type of ulcer okay it is taking a longer time than the required to heal now this is interesting one look at the examples of non specific ulcer and so many uh, you know predisposing factors are again repeated here peptic ulcer Now, peptic ulcers, where where uh, where you can see peptic ulcer, which are the common site. And the stomach and what else? Stomach and duodenum and duodenum. Exactly, you you say it very simply. You know, stomach and duodenum, towards the lesser curvature of the stomach and in the first part of the duodenum. this is called peptic ulcer in jollinger ellison syndrome which is not very common condition the peptic ulcers are seen even distal to the first part of the duodenum they may be seen in the second part third part or even the fourth part and sometimes even in jejunum as well that is a rare condition decubitus ulcer now see here decubitus ulcer means it's a type of bed sore when the person is lying down in one position for a long time and which type of people usually develop bed sore yes which are which type of people which type of patient heart failure coma comatose sir comatose coma coma comatose very good one is comatose patient very nice answer and another is paralyzed patient paralysis exactly paralysis you know because they cannot move their body if somebody else will not move their body they cannot move so there is a constant pressure in some of the areas now if the person is lying down supine which are which are those areas where that constant pressure is felt which are those areas on the on the heel 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 on the heel but not on the back side exactly excellent on the back side just remember the person is lying supine on the bed 
so back side is always in compression to the bed that is the back of the head especially the occipital area the shoulder blade okay shoulder blade you can also call them scapular blade then buttock area and then heel area these are the very very common site for the formation of bed sore or decubitus ulcer they are also commonly known as pressure sore these are a type of ischemic sore actually ischemic ulcer is another one which is caused by see here look at these uh, diseases or condition you can understand by yourself atherosclerosis and burgess disease now every student know about atherosclerosis but what is burgess disease thromboangiitis obliterans also called inflammation of hands swollen exactly adnan you are, you are absolutely so correct this is of the artery sir it's a type of blood blood vessel swelling known as thromboangiitis obliterans sir the blood vessel became it becomes in frames and swelling mainly sir to be same very good very good same type of answer excellent i am sure many other student also know this because we have discussed this in pathology okay i'm sure you have you still remember this buzz's disease the another term is called thromboangiitis obliterans absolutely thrombo and angiitis obliterans now if you analyze that term all the meaning is there there is inflammation of the blood vessel both arteries as well as vein and on top of that there is a formation of thrombus and that thrombus is completely blocking the circulation there leading to ischemia thromboangiitis obliterans please mute yourself and uh, it is very common in young smoker more common in male who smoke heavily and one of the very important manifestation is gangrene okay gangrene but gangrene occurs when there is a complete stoppage of the blood circulation probably if it is not that complete if it is still some amount of blood is flowing in a chronic type of ischemia ulceration is quite common now gravitational ulcer okay is the another one i already uh, you know explain the mechanism it is mainly due to venous insufficiency as a result of varicose vein or because of deep vein thrombosis both can be written here secondary infective wound infection and abscess drainage if there is a wound there is a cut injury for example if that wound is secondarily infected by staphylococci or streptococci now more tissue will be lost from there and it will turn into bigger ulcer after abscess is drained a lot of tissue is lost from there that will also turn into ulcer so it's very easy concept trauma one of the very common cause of ulcer known as traumatic ulcer neuropathic ulcer as a result of damage to the nerve another term is called trophic ulcer trophic is a big term okay trophic ulcer uh, has got different types like ischemic ulcer is also type of trophic ulcer and neuropathic ulcer is also trophic ulcer so diabetes mellitus pavis dorsalis and leprosy these are the three important conditions which are highlighted here but there are so many others now there is a one new term for you tabis dorsalis any student know what's the meaning of this anyone yes sir yes sir in tabis dorsalis there is a in tertius villus which affect the dorsal motor neuron and in which there is a, a fine a fine motor uh, sensation is lost is it said basic is a slow a slow degeneration of as a nerve of a dead take the sensory information to the brain sir okay okay anybody else i want to hear one more answer anybody one more and said so the degenerating nerves that they are mainly in the dorsal column of spinal cord sir okay now this is a this is a bit of difficult questions okay so i want every student to pay attention here we have a few minutes before we go for the break so please listen here tabis dorsalis is a complication of syphilis it's a complication of neurosyphilis that's the first thing and in uh, tabis dorsalis especially 
the neurons which are present in dorsal column tract of the spinal cord dorsal column tract of spinal cord they are damaged so after these uh, fibers are damaged all the functions whatever carried by this tract or this nerve fiber are lost now so to be very precise okay there will be loss of sense of vibration there is loss of sense of position stereognosis fine touch fine touch is also is a function of a dorsal column tract pressure sensation all of these are lost two point discrimination this is also a function of dorsal column tract okay so please uh, remember this this is known as tevis dorsalis now leprosy every student know leprosy is caused by uh, mycobacterium lepra it's a type of infectious disease which mainly targets the peripheral nerve and the skin and uh, one more uh, type of non specific ulcer is aphthous ulcer now this aphthous ulcer are the recurrent okay and very painful ulcer inside the oral cavity on the side of the tongue or inside the oral cavity they are recurrent and they are quite painful we don't know the exact pathophysiology for this aphthous ulcer but there are many speculation or many hypothesis some say they occur because of vitamins deficiency some say they occur because of some autoimmune mechanism or phenomena but exact pathophysiology is not known and treatment is symptomatic and supportive sometimes if they are recurrent we can give a trial of corticosteroid before the break i was talking about different types of non specific ulcer now let's talk about the types of specific one the meaning of specific ulcer we know the causative agent here now see this tuberculosis ulcer is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis we know what is the etiology syphilitic ulcer is caused by tryponema pallidum a type of bacteria a type of uh, spirochet which falls under bacteriology herpetic ulcer is caused by herpes simplex virus herpes simplex type 1 and type 2 type 1 herpes simplex virus causes oral ulcer and type 2 causes genital ulcer type 1 causes oral ulcer and type 2 causes genital ulcer that's uh, common but these days uh, type 1 uh, can also lead to genital infection and type 2 can lead to oral infection the different studies they have reported that fungal ulcer is caused by fungi okay they, they also a part of microbiology and chancroid now chancroid is caused by which organism anyone hemophilus this uh, sir hemophilus to create okay very good it is caused by hemophilus to create hemophilus okay ducrei this is the causative agent and this is a painful condition this is a type of sexually transmitted infection which causes painful ulceration in the genital area and on top of that it also leads to inguinal lymphadenopathy which is also painful chancroid don't forget it so these are some of the specific ulcer which are a cause by different causative agent let's move on okay now there are some malignant ulcer see there this malignant ulcer every student know what are the name rodent ulcer i have uh, you know uh, uh, collect one uh, important picture of rodent ulcer from the internet site i will show you a bit later this rodent ulcer is a very severe and complicated or advanced type of basal cell carcinoma actually it is ulcer seen in basal cell carcinoma in the advanced state very important mcq question in the exam so let me underline this for you rodent ulcer okay a type of basal cell carcinoma basal cell carcinoma is the commonest skin cancer all over the world 
another is called marzoline sulfur you can pronounce it as marzoline or marzoline okay both and this is squamous cell carcinoma or epithelioma this is also very commonly used term this is cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma because squamous cell carcinoma can occur in so many other areas of our body where squamous cell is the epithelium now where are those squamous epithelium present inside our body apart from the skin yes what is the answer anybody um, mucous membrane like in uh, epi in esophagus good Bar barrett esophagus yes. not barrett esophagus barrett esophagus actually have conversion the, 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 the alveolus squamous the into like glomerul like Okay. Now see there. Okay, this is a this is a very important. Lining up hello organ body. Fine, fine. So listen carefully. Skin, capillaries, walls, glomeruli, uh, pericardial lining, pleural lining. Good. Now see there. That's a good answer you are giving. Okay, but uh, the question here is, uh, you know, I should have asked uh, question in a bit different way. Where are the stratified squamous epithelium present okay that's the question i wanted to ask actually so the common site of stratified squamous epithelium are esophagus somebody told me already esophagus okay oral cavity is another very important site oral cavity tongue okay tongue is present inside the oral cavity so quite easy answer lower third of vagina Okay, lower third of vagina. Okay, anal canal, anal canal, and even the cervix, even the cervix. In case of female, these are the area where a stratified squamous epithelium is present. So all of these uh, sites can develop squamous cell carcinoma. But Marzoline's ulcer is not the term we use if ulcer forms in those sites. Okay, this is only used for cutaneous or skin squamous cell carcinoma. So please don't confuse. That's why I'm mentioning these things here. And one important point: if a person is a smoker, of a heavy smoker for a long time, and a relatively older patient, that person can develop bronchogenic carcinoma. Which may be squamous cell type again, but remember, squamous epithelium is not naturally present in the bronchi. It is actually a process of metaplasia. The pseudo stratified squamous columnar epithelium, I should say, pseudo stratified columnar epithelium will turn into squamous epithelium because of prolonged effect of the smoking. So this is example of metaplasia. And another is Barrett esophagus. So don't In include the name of Barrett esophagus here, okay? Barrett esophagus never develop into squamous cell carcinoma. It will develop into adenocarcinoma because squamous epithelium will change into columnar epithelium there with the effect of GERD. So this is a bit of uh, extra knowledge for you. So let's move on. Another is malignant melanoma. Now, malignant melanoma is a type of Skin cancer. This is the most malignant type of skin cancer among all, the lethal one. And this skin cancer can uh, quickly lead to death of the person. So this originates from melanocyte. That's why the term melanoma. So basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and malignant melanoma all can lead to ulcer formation on the skin. Let's move on. Please mute yourself. Now there are certain other ulcers which have a typical name, okay, or typical terms. You see this. So these are uh, Cushing's ulcer, Curling's ulcer, and Brulee's ulcer. Quite a familiar questions for you in the exam. So Cushing's ulcer is a type of stress ulcer which is developed in the stomach and first part of the duodenum following head injury. Head injury 
is a type of stressful condition to the patient and sometimes the patient may develop coma also that type of patient has a high chance of developing stress ulcer in the stomach and duodenum we call that cushing's ulcer now why that term cushing's ulcer has come there there is a connection okay remember in case of head injury there is a high chance of raised icp or intracranial pressure in raised intracranial pressure cushing stride is very commonly seen so cushing stride is a combination of bradycardia hypertension and irregular breathing so because of that term cushing ulcer has been given another is a curling ulcer now what is curling ulcer it is similar type of stress ulcer but in this condition it is caused by burns now see this it's also a type of stress ulcer in stomach and duodenum following extensive burn so this is curling ulcer very important question in the exam the third one is called brulee's ulcer this brulee's ulcer means it's a cutaneous manifestation of infection caused by mycobacterium ulcerans this mycobacterium ulcerans is a typical type of mycobacteria i'm sure you have studied this in microbiology mycobacterium tuberculosis is a typical one and there are some other group which are called atypical mycobacteria like mycobacterium kansasi mycobacterium merinum mycobacterium scrofulaceum mycobacterium ulcerans mycobacterium avium intracellulare these are the different example for you and among them mycobacterium ulcerans if it causes cutaneous ulcer we call that brulee's ulcer that's just the name okay let's move on now all of you please focus on this slide this is known as rodent ulcer now look at the patient here the patient looks quite old that is the you know common age for the development of basal cell carcinoma but it can be it can occur in relatively younger people also this is caused by prolonged sun exposure there are so many other causes let's not go into the detail now look at this ulcer here okay it has quite irregular margin okay irregular margin and if you pay attention here this edges looks like relatively beaded type of edges this is called beaded edges okay it is rather easy to feel than see and on the floor of the ulcer this is called floor isn't it floor see that i can see some black discolored substance there this is cellular debris or necros material there so this is called rodent ulcer it is seen in basal cell carcinoma advanced type of basal cell carcinoma now another picture okay is showing squamous cell carcinoma over the upper chest wall now look at this it doesn't look good at all this is a malignant ulcer it's a malignant ulcer look at this edges they are rolled over these are these are called hanging edges from the surface and this is the slough which is present at the floor this is not a good looking tissue now another is diabetic ulcer of the foot now this person must be a diabetic otherwise we don't call it a diabetic ulcer now why diabetic people can develop ulcer so easily what's the mechanism what's the reason yes i want to hear some slow answer healing, sir. slow healing sir does the diabetic patient diabetic patients are more lower weak and sad because of slow healing good it is a case of immunocompromised state good good see there i have already uh, got so many important points from the different students okay so i'm just combining them together here so students are saying this is a immunocompromised situation so there is a more chance of infection absolutely correct number 2 it takes a long time to heal the wound definitely that is also absolutely true third 
diabetes is an important risk factor for atherosclerosis and whenever atherosclerosis occurs in those arteries which supply the foot area importantly dorsalis pedis and posterior tibial or even popliteal or femoral you know which are a little way uh, above so if they are blocked there is a high chance of ulcer formation that is another reason i can give you and one more reason in the chronic state of diabetes there is diabetic neuropathy the nerves are damaged and after that it will become a neuropathic ulcer or trophic ulcer so see that so many causes we can give for the development of diabetic ulcer and diabetic ulcer is very difficult to treat now another uh, you know picture please pay attention this is a callous ulcer without any sign of healing callous means chronic ulcer it taking a long time to heal and there is no granulation tissue remember granulation tissue looks pink it looks healthy because of the active generation of blood vessels but i can only see this whitish looking substance here this is the debris this is a dirty substance okay this is not a good granulation tissue now this is a tuberculous ulcer in the chest wall and ankle in two separate patient of course these two are separate patients we can also find out by looking at the color of the skin here okay now if i pay attention on this especially see that this is a you know the superficial part of the ulcer or the opening of the ulcer you can say and tuberculous ulcer is usually undermining type of ulcer it is going further away when we go deeper okay this is a hallmark of tuberculous ulcer never forget this undermine is now this is a squamous cell carcinoma of the scalp by looking uh, uh, by inspecting this type of ulcer many doctor or the medical student will think about malignancy because look at the size of this okay look at the irregularity of this ulcer these are hip top margin or rolled over margin which is called everted edge this is a typical picture of squamous cell carcinoma of the skin in this case it it is in the scalp now another picture shows squamous cell carcinoma in the arm with secondaries in the axillary lymph node now these are called lymphadenopathy look at this is axilla okay, axilla has so many different groups of lymph node they are called pectoral group of lymph nodes or anterior group okay the lateral group is also there medial group is also there central group is also there and apical group is also there there are five groups of lymph node in the axilla and it is very difficult to say which groups are there because they are usually in large they are very big in size here okay so why these lymph nodes are in large a uh, uh, surgeon or the doctor or the medical student has to ask this question and this is the reason this is called primary disease here as a result of this these lymph nodes are in large and this looks like a malignant ulcer they have done the biopsy and they have confirmed this is a squamous cell carcinoma of the skin okay so let's move on now this is not a good looking picture at all you can clearly see the diagnosis here this is a ischemic ulcer foot okay ischemic ulcer foot and look here the middle three toes are already amputated because of gangrene now every student know what is gangrene you have already studied before and probably this gangrene is caused by either atherosclerosis either diabetes either by burgess disease anything you know the cause can be any we have to take a good history to find out the cause so this is a perfect example of ischemic ulcer now this is a venous ulcer a venous ulcer 
this is a typical site for venous ulcer now give me two important causes for venous ulcer formation what are those disease after which venous ulcer is formed yes what are those condition varicose vein sir one varicose is varicose vein one is varicose vein second thrombophilobitis Thrombophlebitis. Yeah. Okay. okay, you can say thrombophlebitis or you can say deep vein thrombosis. Okay, thrombophlebitis or deep vein thrombosis. Burgess disease is mainly included under ischemic ulcer, especially it goes towards the arterial type of ulcer. Though the term thromboangitis obliterans is there. it mainly you know listed uh, towards the arterial obstruction so venous ulcer we are talking here so the typical two important causes are varicose vein and deep vein thrombosis okay so these are also known as gravitational ulcer now let me talk a little bit about this these are very typically seen in this area you can clearly see here this area is above the malleoli above the malleoli and below the knee joint knee joint is way above okay this is a leg area so here is the ankle of the malleoli and up at uh, the knee so this area a uh, very commonly affected by venous ulcer and anatomically we call this gaiter's zone so gaiter's zone now you may be wondering what is the meaning of this gaiter's zone the meaning is it is the anatomical site between the malleoli and the knee joint so this is a large area and it is present on the medial aspect and the lateral aspect of the leg medial and lateral aspect of the leg between malleoli and the knee joint so these are the common site for a venous ulcer formation see here okay it doesn't look good at all this is a extensive type of ulcer this is a infective ulcer in the foot and all this uh, substance okay the uh, whitish brownish looking substance is slough this is a dead tissue you can see the exposed tendon here and look at this site there is a gangrenous toe also this great toe is gangrenous so this has to be a ischemic type of ulcer and which is secondarily infected because of this gangrene i can confidently say this is a ischemic ulcer which is secondarily infected and probably some type of debridement is already done now after seeing all these different uh, pictures you know the concept is quite uh, clear uh, you already know what is ulcer so to diagnose this ulcer we need to take a very good history we need to go for clinical examination and order some relevant investigation so let's talk about them so regarding the history taking of ulcer patient what is the mode of onset that's the uh, you know first question an important one if if it is caused by trauma it will heal by itself it will heal by itself if there are no other predisposing factor in case of diabetic patient it may take time but it it also heals in them if it is a spontaneous type of ulceration okay we should have some predisposing factor or precipitating factor definitely a uh, few so the examples are given here matted tuberculous lymph node is seen in tuberculosis gamma now just now i i talked about this in which disease gamma is seen which disease is that syphilis tertiary stage of syphilis syphilis very good okay quite impressed it's a syphilis it's a tertiary stage of the syphilis okay. it's a type of granuloma which is seen in tertiary stage of syphilis don't forget very important question in the exam and malignant tumor they can also easily can give rise to ulceration so they, uh, we don't need any trauma to develop ulceration 
in this different situation. Second question in the history taking is the duration of the ulcer. How long? Okay. How long the patient is having them? Ask whether they are, there are days or months or weeks. A specific history should be taken. Traumatic ulcers are immediately noticed right at the time of injury or trauma and neurotrophic or neuropathic ulcer noted after some time. Why? Because in the beginning there is loss of sensation and only later on when the patient do not feel any pain there then the ulcer will form. So this is a typical feature in case of diabetic ulceration and leprotic ulceration. There is no, no pain, no feeling of touch. So the patient will try, will tend to ignore it. They will ignore that area because they don't have any sensation or feeling. And that area will typically develop neurotrophic or neuropathic ulcer. Ask about pain. Very important question. Now, if there are inflammatory ulcers like peptic ulcer, there will be pain. Traumatic ulcer will also have pain. There is no doubt about it. If there is no pain in the ulcer, now look at the causes. Syphilitic ulcer doesn't have any pain. Syphilitic ulcer. In the primary stage of the syphilis, there is a typical term we use for the ulcer in primary stage of the syphilis. That is called shanker. Okay, shanker is seen in primary syphilis. Remember, syphilis has got different stages: primary, secondary, and tertiary stage of the syphilis. Okay, so this uh, shanker is formed in genitalia in male or female, and that ulcer is painless. Very very important point. On the top of it, the lymph node which are swollen in the inguinal regions are also painless in case of syphilis. Now, trophic ulcer, so the examples in diabetes, in leprosy, and in tabis dorsalis. This tabis dorsalis is caused by neurosyphilis. Okay, it's a type of tertiary syphilis now, and it damages the dorsal column tract fiber. So these are all examples of trophic ulcer. Remember, in the beginning of the class, I told you about the meaning of trophic ulcer. It may be caused by pressure, but it should have some predisposing conditions there, like some chronic diseases, like ischemic condition or neuronal damage. In case of malignant ulcer, what will happen now? See here, this is a very interesting condition, like squamous cell carcinoma of the skin or basal cell carcinoma of the skin. They are painless condition, but they become painful in the late stages when nerve endings are involved. And why malignancy involve the nerve endings? What's the mechanism? What's the mechanism there? Because, because of metastasis. Good. Good. One more, one more reason. One is metastasis is good. I completely agree with you. Any other? Invasiveness. Yes, say it again. Invasive. Invasion. Okay, local invasion. Local invasion. Don't forget that. One more. Malignancy is rapidly increasing mass. That rapidly increasing mass will give pressure to the surrounding nerve. You can also highlight that. So see there. Quickly, we can give three reasons why in malignancy there may be pain. Remember, in the beginning, there is no pain, okay? Later on, pain may be there because of involvement of the nerve. That can happen because of local invasion. That can happen because of pressure as a result of rapidly enlarging mass, or it can occur because of metastasis as well. Let's move on. Now, let's continue the history taking here. Ask about whether the ulcer is enlarging, whether it is decreasing, or how deep is the ulcer. This is in the history, remember? You will definitely examine that ulcer later on. 
but this is the history in the history we have to ask this enlarging ulcer means it is getting worse than before it is progressing ulcer decreasing means it is getting better okay and depth if the ulcer is deeper and deeper then also it is very severe type or it is complicated one perfect example is a bed sore it will go deeper and deeper now ask about what type of discharge is coming from the ulcer bed or ulcer floor ulcer floor is the good good point here okay bed we cannot see it actually bed is the is the site where ulcer rest now if the pus is coming from there it's a active infection active infection rather than inflammation if blue green color is the discharge it is caused by pseudomonas now pseudomonas is a type of bacteria it's a very you know uh, lethal type of bacteria and this mainly causes infection in hospital so it is important cause of hospital acquired infection and one of the important point regarding pseudomonas is the discharge is usually bluish or greenish in color as a result of the pigment which is produced by pseudomonas pseudomonas aeruginosa so can you tell me which antibiotic you like to give to treat pseudomonal infection which antibiotic we can use sir uh, piperacillin and aminoglycosides good very good answer excellent any any other drugs any other drug carbapenem good good i i agree with you one more answer i want answer uh, quinolones yeah fluoroquinolones also can be used what what antibiotic from third generation cephalosporin what is that name from third Sophia generation okay okay now no no see here okay the name of that antibiotic is ceftazidime ceftazidime this is very specific to pseudomonal infection this is a typical question which is asked in the exam yes you are right i cannot disagree with your answer even if you say ceftriaxone uh, cefotaxim moxalactam or cefoperazone all these are different members of third generation cephalosporin we can try them but the specific one again pseudomonas is called ceftazidime it belongs to third generation cephalosporin and the answer which is given by the students all of them are correct okay meropenem okay or carbapenem is a very advanced or modern type of antibiotic this is a you know uh, this has a very broad coverage so we always give this as a reserve drug we never use this as a first line fluoroquinolones can act against pseudomonas aminoglycoside act against pseudomonas okay and so these are uh, uh, different answers very good now if watery type of discharge comes from the ulcer there may be tuberculosis tuberculosis sometimes even bloody discharge may be there now some other important point okay in the history you can clearly see there is there any history of previous ulceration or not if it is there then was that ulcer similar to this or a different one is it present at the same site or elsewhere these are the important question now peptic ulcer disease usually forms on a you know the same organ isn't it venous ulcer usually forms on the same site the same site between the medial malleoli or a lateral malleoli and the knee joint either on the medial aspect or the lateral aspect of the leg take a history regarding the drug intake what type of drug the patient was taking are they steroid or cytotoxic drug or not because both of these interfere wound healing so that there is a chance of ulceration for a longer time steroid and cytotoxic drug both are immuno suppressive drug they are anti inflammatory drug so there is a decreased chance of wound healing now give me the example of cytotoxic drug few of the example please yes 
Sir, the, sir, the anthracycline, the vincal colloids like vincristine sulfate, vinblastine sulfate, so the anti-metabolite drug, we can also give as an example. Very good. Perfect answer. Very nice. Okay. So, any student uh, can, can answer. Uh, like, we don't want so many examples. Just two to three examples would be enough. Okay. Like methotrexate. Very good and easy name to remember. Methotrexate. Cyclophosphamide is another one. Very easy name. Isn't it? Then other, like cyclosporine, very commonly used drug in the clinical practice. Azathioprine, isn't it? Then just like Uzer was saying, downorubicin, doxorubicin, different other drugs can be told. But don't, don't keep quiet, okay? This type of question is very commonly asked. Just like me, many other teachers also have this type of habit. Whenever the term comes, they just want to know whether students have this knowledge or not. Now, ask about past history or any associated disease in the past, like diabetes mellitus, syphilis, tertiary syphilis, tabes dorsalis, syringomyelia, transverse myelitis, peripheral neuritis, and other stages of the syphilis as well. So some are new terms. So let me quickly, you know, explain this for you. Sorry. This is my mistake. Yeah. Now I have come back again. What is syringomyelia? Anybody? Have you heard this term? Sister or cavity formed in the spinal cord. Cavity is a spinal cord, so no one is a syringe. Good. Very quick answer. Okay. Very good. And the correct one as well. Now, syrinx is a cavity which is formed at the center of the spinal cord and it has got a connection with the central canal of the spinal cord. And that canal, okay, has a ischia shape. We all know that. So, syrinx is also filled with cerebrospinal fluid. Now, remember, this is a cavity inside the spinal cord. So, this cavity is definitely giving pressure to the nerves which are surrounding it and it will lead to destruction of the nerve. So this is a type of neurological disorder. Transverse myelitis is a transverse type of inflammation of spinal cord again. It's a transverse type of inflammation. So the whole thickness of the spinal cord may be involved. And the common site are thoracolumbar part of the spinal cord. Peripheral neuritis is a nerve inflammation of the peripheral nerve or you can call it peripheral neuropathy, but it is caused by inflammation, like connective tissue disorder. There's a good example for you. And syphilis, many students know it already, but if you want to know in detail, uh, you will study this in dermatology and venereology, because this uh, particular topic falls under venereal diseases, and venereal diseases are part of dermatology, which will be taught to you in eighth semester. Now, okay, now see that the other uh, part of the examination, uh, the, let's examine this clinically. So regarding the site, where are the site of the ulcer? So let's examine it from our side. Rodent ulcer are typically present in the upper part of the face. And rodent ulcer is seen in which condition? Let me ask you again, which condition is that? Basal cell carcinoma. Is it? Basal cell carcinoma. Basal cell carcinoma. Very good. It's basal cell carcinoma. Okay. Basal cell carcinoma or BCC. This is the advanced type of basal cell carcinoma, which is known as rodent ulcer. So, this is very typically seen in facial area, the upper part of the face. If you remember that picture, that is typical one. Now, Squamous cell carcinoma is mainly present in the lower lip. This is squamous cell carcinoma or cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma in the lower lip. I was talking about the importance of examining the site for the ulcer. So rodent ulcer are typically found on the upper part of the face. A rodent ulcer means advanced type of basal cell carcinoma of the skin. Squamous cell carcinoma of the skin mainly present in the lower lip and primary chancre of syphilis. Now see that this is called chancre 
and this is in the primary stage of the syphilis that's why it is written like that can be seen in the upper lip especially okay if there is oral sex if there is a history of oral sex because this is a type of sexually transmitted infection and this primary chancre of syphilis occurs on that site which is exposed in the beginning but much more commonly it occurs in the genital area in case of oral sex only it is present in the upper lip now regarding the size of the ulcer a carcinoma or carcinomatous ulcer extend quite rapidly than the rodent ulcer but slowly than the inflammatory one not a very important uh, point actually because whenever we take this history or ask this question to the patient you know this is a, a subjective type of answer we get it is better examined by us regarding the shape rodent ulcer are usually circular in shape but in some of the patient it may be already irregular because of the extensive destruction of the margin and gammatous ulcer are usually circular or serpiginous now there is a new term for you serpiginous so the meaning of a serpiginous here is okay so let me write it so that you will not forget easily serpiginous means it is a spreading type of ulcer okay a spreading type of ulcer where one edge of the ulcer is healing one edge okay is healing and another edge or another end i should say rather than edge you know end will be the better term for you to understand one end is healing and another end is actively spreading actively spreading so this is known as serpiginous ulcer one of the important example of serpiginous ulcer is gammatous ulcer and another one is chancroid is a sexually transmitted infection caused by hemophilus ducreae that is also serpiginous type of ulcer now regarding the age see there this is just a, a revision for you because we have already done all of this before okay uh, share please healing or non specific ulcer has shelving age shelving age means it's a slopy age okay it's a sloping age is just another other term sloping age is a healing type of ulcer any type of ulcer can heal so that's why it is written as a non specific one rodent ulcer is pearly a rolled age it's a beaded age epithelioma also known as cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma has raised and everted is rolled over or everted is tuberculous ulcer has undermined is and it often look bluish during the examination whereas the syphilitic ulcer is a punched out ulcer vertically punched out ulcer so these are some of the important point regarding the age and let me tell you again These are very very important question from the MCQ and Viva point of view. Let's move on. Now, some other clinical examination which we should do in a case of ulcer is floor. Let's look at the floor first. What is there on the floor of the ulcer? if there is watery or apple jelly type of granulation this is uh, you know feature of tuberculous ulcer but this is not a constant type of feature okay more common feature is this sometimes it may be you know some other combination also like a, a, a necrosis material may be seen there was leather slough is seen in gummatous ulcer it's just like a, a leather slough just like uh, you know uh, from the you know when we wash the cloth there is a leather which is coming from the soap or isn't it detergent a similar type of appearance and gammatous ulcer is seen in syphilis regarding the base okay 
Remember, base can only be palpated. We cannot see the base because ulcer is located on the base and it is deeper. So when we feel or palpate it, if it is indurated, it's a feature of carcinoma. Indurated means, what is the meaning of induration? Hardening. Exactly. Absolutely right, Zulfikar. Very good. It's a hardening. It's a hardening. It's a hard type of feeling, a firm type of feeling. So probably, exactly. It's a, it's, it's a, you know, malignancy is always a hard type of tissue there. Okay. So that is quite easily understood. And it is attached to the deeper structure sometimes. It may be bone, it may be muscle, it may be other soft tissue. It depends what type of ulcer we are talking about. Like varicose ulcer may be attached to the tibia. Remember, it is present in the area between the medial malleolus or the lateral malleolus and the knee joint. So that, that is the site for tibia. If I talk medial site, this is tibia, lateral side is fibula. Now regarding the discharge, okay, regarding the discharge, see here, all of you. The purulent type of discharge, purulent means pus, it is seen in active inflammation or infection. Blue-green color discharge seen in pseudomonas eruginosa infection. Watery discharge is more commonly seen in tuberculosis. Bloody discharge is non-specific. Sometimes it's seen in tuberculosis also, sometimes in malignancy as well. And scanty serous discharge is seen in healing ulcer, like after the trauma or after any type of ulcer, if it is actively healing, then scanty serous type of discharge is seen. Scanty means very little amount of discharge. So these are the examination regarding the discharge from the ulcer. Now, when we examine, okay, if the patient complains of tenderness, tenderness means patient is complaining of pain when you touch that area, when you press that area, this is called tenderness. So painful ulcers are mainly seen in inflammatory ulcers like peptic ulcers. They are painful. But peptic ulcer cannot be, you know, uh, palpated from outside. They are deeper ulcer. But we can always give a, you know, a bit of push there, a bit of uh, pressing at the epigastric area. And many of the time patient complains of pain. So tenderness is present there, okay? But uh, it is not universally present in all of the people. Painless ulcer, syphilitic ulcer, already talked about, especially in primary syphilis, like a shanker, this is painless. Trophic ulcer in diabetes and leprosy, because there is already damage of the sensory nerve. There is no sensation there. So these ulcers are painless. Diabetic neuropathic ulcer, and leprotic ulcer, they are painless. There's no doubt about it. Regarding the malignant ulcer, and these are the example for you, squamous cell carcinoma and basal cell carcinoma of the skin, they are painless in the beginning, but they become painful when nerve endings are involved. And there are three important mechanisms which I already explained to you. One of them is local invasion. Second, metastasis. And third is direct pressure given by enlarging mass of the malignancy. Now, one important point I like to highlight here again, if that nerve, if those nerves are completely destroyed by the malignancy, then there will be no pain also. So even if it is a late type of malignancy, if the nerves are completely destroyed, then there may not be any pain. Now, let's palpate the lymph node, which may be there as a result of ulcer. If it is a tuberculous ulcer, the lymph node, which may be there, are matted. Matted. They are usually non-tender, but they may be slightly tender. So it, 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 below, it depends on the you know, description given by the patient. Okay, But remember, rather than tenderness, they are non-tender, just like malignancy. Syphilitic ulcer, 
syphilitic ulcer uh, sorry lymph node uh, i mean to say the lymph node which are enlarged because of syphilitic ulcer are discrete and form discrete and form what do you mean by discrete discrete means what single solid type separate very good it is single single also i can i can accept that answer but it is separate if there are even if there are multiple lymph nodes okay at the same site they are not joined with each other i can uh, palpate that lymph node all around i can pick that lymph node with my finger this is called discrete lymph node and regarding the malignant lymph node they are hard now and they are fixed to the surrounding tissue that's why they are immobile i cannot move them and they are stony hard never forget this they are stony hard this is the hallmark of malignant lymph node and what malignancy we are talking about now skin malignancy like basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma but basal cell carcinoma the very very rarely metastasizes to the lymph node or in many textbook it is written it never metastasizes to the lymph node whereas squamous cell carcinoma it commonly metastasizes to the local lymph node okay it it goes to the local lymph nodes if we palpate those local lymph node that's what we are talking right now those local lymph nodes are hard now if you examine the patient generally that is called general examination the remember in the beginning of uh, these clinical subjects uh, we have talked about how to do general examination we quickly examine the general appearance of the patient okay then what is the consciousness level then from head to toe examination is done so we may find evidence of debility debility means weight loss severe sickness that is called debility the patient may be having heart failure or cardiac failure patient may be having anemia or patient may be having different features of diabetes diabetes cannot be diagnosed by general examination okay but we can find out different complications of diabetes like diabetes neuropathy diabetes retinopathy isn't it some different other ischemic complications of diabetes like that that's the meaning let's move on see ya now after we have completed the examination what are the relevant investigation we can order in this type of patient we can take swab for culture and sensitivity very important test because there is ulcer which is present in the patient we must try to find out is there any causative agent which is responsible for that ulceration or not or sometimes the ulcers are secondarily infected also that they may not be caused by the same organism which we grow in the lab like it may be it may be a diabetic ulcer in the beginning and later on it is secondarily infected so that is a very important information we can take smear for staining like gram stain like afb stain gram stain is mainly done by bacteria and afb stain is mainly done for which organism afb stain mycobacterium exactly mycobacterium tuberculosis or mycobacterium leprae these are the two important example you can quickly give or you can also say atypical mycobacteria as well serological test serological test like you know vdrl actually man to test is not a serological test so i want you to write this man to test okay on another line okay that would be always better serological test means antibody test a good example is vdrl and rpr these are non specific test for syphilis so what is the full form of vdrl anybody venereal disease research laboratory test very good adnan very quick answer 
venereal disease research laboratory so i hope many students know this but still i like to highlight here okay because a lot of answers are not coming so i presume many students do not know this it is a good idea to write it here venereal disease research laboratory okay vrl test this is done for syphilis and this meant to test this meant to test is done for which which uh, disease tb tuberculosis exactly i hope 100% of the student know this answer and of course because we have been talking about this for a long time meant to test is also known as ppd test or tuberculin test ppd or tuberculin now see here these are very important synonym sometimes in the exam the examiner use these uh, terms and if you don't know what is the meaning then you will pick a wrong answer there so we have to remember this tuberculin or ppd ppd means purified protein derivative test this is done for tuberculosis now some of the radiological test we can go for are the x ray of bone to exclude osteomyelitis or chest x ray or whatever you know site is involved you can go for the x ray of that part if you believe bones are involved there that's the meaning and biopsy is a very important investigation you can take from the lesion or you can remove the lymph node and send to the lab the lymph node examination also provide a lot of information about the primary disease because the metastasis from that malignancy will go to the lymph node so if we examine the lymph node we can get those malignant cells from there and then any infection in the site will definitely go to the drainage lymph node so a good example here is tuberculosis any other infection also can be taken here as the example okay so let's move on now we have come to the very important uh, you know part of this topic that means how i know as a doctor that this ulcer is healing many of the patient may come to me okay with the ulcer but how i know this ulcer is healing and probably i don't need to disturb it i just need to wait a bit longer and it will heal in time now see here the site of those healing ulcer can be anywhere in the body where there should be good blood circulation size it can be any size it may be smaller around 1 to 2 cm or even bigger than that regarding the age now the important points are coming now regarding the age every student know by this time because i have been repeated this for so many is a shelving or sloping age or beveled age these are all synonymous term okay shelving sloping or beveled age this is hallmark regarding the floor it is covered by pink granulation tissue this is a healthy granulation tissue pink because there are lots of blood vessels there it looks healthy regarding the base it bleeds and touch now why it bleeds and touch because there are good blood vessels present there there are good number of blood vessels i should say there is a good proliferation of capillaries they are healthy type of blood vessels regarding the discharge it may be scanty serous type of discharge this is a sign of healing ulcer lymph nodes not palpable anymore the ulcer is not fixed it is free if the ulcer is fixed probably we think a malignant type of ulcer and then if we examine the surrounding skin it should be soft it is flexible and it is not congested so everything is point towards you know healing ulcer means the prognosis is quite good patient will get better very soon now let's see 
some of the picture and try to consolidate the knowledge. All of you, please pay attention to our screen. What can you see here? See this. Look at this area. Okay, especially this this area. Rather than A, B is even better. B. Now this is pink granulation tissue. Still, some slough is remaining on the side. Okay. This is called slough, but this pink area is a healthy part. Now, a big part of the skin is lost from here, so we need to go for a skin graft here. This is called skin graft. If you want to, you know, completely cover this wound, I need to uh, take skin from some other area of the patient's body and graft it here. This is called skin graft, okay, which is very commonly done in the hospital. Now, this is even better. Look how pink it is. If we touch it, it may bleed very easily. This is called healthy granulation tissue, a little bit slopey type of age, okay, and this is a indication of healing type of ulcer. Now, some other uh, pictures which are also showing the healthy granulation tissue. See this, there is a bit of bleeding already. And uh, this is a very, uh, you know, uh, this uh, ulcer is ready for skin grafting now. Skin graft is taken from some other site, maybe from the anterior abdominal wall, okay, which is a very painful uh, area actually for the skin graft. Mainly it is taken from the anterior part of the thigh. This is very commonly taken, okay. Uh, and then uh, grafted it here. This is a non-healing ulcer with pale, unhealthy granulation tissue. Where is the pink substance here? I can see in some of the area, there are very scattered and very few. Uh, majority of the uh, areas is dirty looking. Okay. This is unhealthy type of granulation tissue or slough, which is present at the ulcer floor. So you can clearly tell the difference now, which ulcer is healing properly, okay, and which ulcer is not. Now, with this information, let's talk about how to diagnose a malignant ulcer. Very, very important part of this lecture. Regarding the site of a malignant ulcer, listen properly, 95% of rodent ulcer, basal cell carcinoma in the advanced state are present in the upper part of the face. And squamous cell carcinoma typically affects the lower lip. Already repeated so many times. So you are quite familiar with this statement now. Regarding the shape, they are usually circular. But in the advanced state, they may be irregular also. They may be irregular. Regarding the age, you see this rodent ulcer has a pearly, okay, pearly and uh, like a beady type of edges, a beaded appearance or beaded age, we say. And squamous cell carcinoma of the skin, also known as epithelioma, has raised and everted age. Regarding the floor, this is a malignancy. And malignancy has the hallmark of necrosis, okay, and hemorrhage. So usually it is covered with slough. If it is secondarily infected, it has pus or exudation as well. Otherwise, pus and exudation may not be there, but usually there is a lot of slough and necrosis tissue. Regarding the base, we need to palpate it now. And when we palpate, it is usually fixed to the underlying structure, muscle, bone, or other type of soft tissue. Regarding the discharge, it is blood stained. This is very important one. Blood stain is called sanguinous discharge. Okay, sanguinous discharge. So this is a medical term. So let me write it for you because in some of the other presentation, 
this term may come and people may get confused here sanguineous discharge means blood mixed discharge regarding the lymph node now i already talked about they are enlarged they are big lymph node they are hard to feel hard like a stony hard and they are fixed to the underlying structure I means they are not mobile anymore okay they are fixed to the underlying structure and this fixation is also explained by local invasion property of this lymph node because these are having malignant cells there okay so that is the reason and regarding the pain they are usually painless but become painful when no bindings are involved so these are the hallmarks of malignant ulcer absolutely important question okay for the students now there is a, a you know a, a point or a small you know a term which is keep on coming on this topic for so many time that is called slough everybody know the meaning of necrosis okay and let's not go into the detail necrosis means cell death cell death that is necrosis very easy term but why that uh, cell die there are some pathophysiology involved probably because of the degradative action of enzyme these enzymes mainly come from the lysozyme or lysosome we should say which are present inside the cell these are they are not the death bag of the cell and those cells should be lethally injured by different uh, mechanism that is necrosis and slough is a piece of dead soft tissue can be skin can be fascia or can be tendon it depends which type of ulcer we are talking about so dead soft tissue dirty looking tissue on the floor of the ulcer is known as slough now we are coming towards the end of this uh, important topic what are the stages of non specific ulcer now please pay attention those stages uh, can be discussed under three different heading they are active ulcer transition phase and repair phase means from the uh, actively you know stage of the ulcer they are going towards the healing phase that is the meaning so in extension or active ulcer phase the floor is covered with exudate and slough and by that one important examination finding we know this ulcer is still very active there when we feel the base it is indurated when we feel the base it is indurated and that induration is caused by inflammatory thickening and hardening everybody know the meaning now and discharge may be purulent may be blood stained or maybe other types of color discharge is coming from there whereas in the transition phase now it is going towards the healing phase sloughs are already shedded floor becomes clear now there is no dead and devitalized tissue there induration is diminished because the inflammation is slowly decreasing discharge becomes serous or even clear in the beginning it 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 was a pus or blood which is known as serous sanguinous or sanguinous discharge later on it is clearing now and a small reddish area of granulation tissue appear on the floor you see this this granulation tissue is becoming more healthy than before and the final is a repair phase in this condition the healthy granulation tissue will cover all over the ulcer and slowly this granulation tissue will develop fibrosis and ultimately replaced by the scar now let me tell you if there is a large part of the skin is lost then we have to help the process by skin graft otherwise a good scar will never form so these are three stages now how to treat a case of non specific ulcer how to treat it 
if this question is asked then answer is uh, you know uh, easy for you you have to find out what is the cause of the ulcer you try at least and in many of the cases you can find because of history examination and good investigation so any underlying cause is treated like varicose vein diabetes mellitus and any arterial disease if they are there we should go for the treatment of them at the same time we can go for some general management of the ulcer like the slough should be separated from the floor okay because the slough is the collection of necrosis tissue there necrosis soft tissue so we should remove them which will hasten the granulation and stimulate the epithelialization at the same time we can apply certain lotion and certain other medicine let me explain this if there is a minor type of infection going on this lotion okay maybe local antibiotic probably they may help the process and ideal dressing should be done don't expose that ulcer for a longer time secondary bacterial infection may occur but if the ulcer uh, is still active type you know still a lot of uh, uh, cellular debris or the slough is there then don't go for the dressing in the beginning you remove that part and then only dressing is done now another important part what is the criteria of healthy granulation tissue what type of granulation tissue is called healthy now this question if i ask to the student the answer will definitely come but all of you please uh, see there it is flat and below or at the level of skin surface it should not come above the skin surface usually so it is flat and below or at the level of skin surface first thing second it is pink in color because of the active blood vessels it should bleed and touch this is a sign of healthy tissue and then it doesn't discharge pus or any other suspicious type of discharge it should only have minor amount of serous discharge if any present so these are the features of healthy granulation tissue so important point here is pink in color and bleeds and touch now another important question for the student what are the uh, you know diagnostic point for tubercular ulcer just like malignant ulcer just like non specific ulcer what are the important diagnostic point for tuberculous ulcer so let's combine different things together here from the history okay, let me underline this from the history this is spontaneously growing ulcer it may develop over a nodule or a lump it is mildly painful or may not be any painful at all and in the past there is a history of tuberculosis present this tb is a pulmonary tuberculosis okay but right now probably that tb has gone out of the lung and the patient has developed lymph node tuberculosis and then tubercular ulcer regarding the site neck axilla and groin are the most common one among them neck is the commonest site shape of the ulcer is irregular and age very very important point is undermined age okay undermined age regarding the floor it has apple jelly type of granulation or sometimes there may not be any granulation only has watery type of discharge when we feel the base it feels slightly hard but not as hard as the inflammatory or the malignant one this size is watery just now talked about and the surrounding lymph nodes are matted this is one of the important feature of tubercular lymphadenopathy matted lymph node matted means the discrete lymph nodes are not present anymore the boundaries or the peripheral part of these lymph nodes are fused with each other so we can feel the lymph node as one group that is matted lymph node
now this question every student can answer on their own how to manage a tubercular ulcer answer is pretty simple you just give anti tubercular therapy initiation phase 2 month continuation phase 4 month so total 6 month in the initiation or intensive phase also we say rifampicin inh pyrazinamide and ethambutol and continuation phase if it is given for 4 month we go for rifampicin and isoniazid if you go for 6 month you choose which drug in in the place of rifampicin if i go for 6 month what is the answer the streptomycin is it streptomycin this is uh, you know what is another drug it starts with isoniazid ethambutol okay so here ethambutol so let me repeat it again maybe you are a little bit confused here in the initiation phase this is a uh, you know uh, category 1 treatment rifampicin isoniazid pyrazinamide and thambutol for 2 month followed by 4 month of rifampicin and isoniazid but if i don't use rifampicin i have to go for ethambutol but i need to give it for 6 month okay so this is a important point rifampicin is a very powerful drug so only 4 month is enough if you go for it search for evidence of pulmonary and intestinal tb examine and do some proper investigation and if operation is needed okay then you go for it but usually operation is needed not that commonly especially if there is perforation of intestinal ulcer uh, in case of intestinal tuberculosis then we may need to go for the uh, uh, surgery now which surgery is that what what is the name of that surgery when you open the abdomen what is the name anybody laparoscopic surgery yes laparoscopic or laparotomy laparotomy means the conventional opening laparoscopy is with the help of instrument the last part of this very important topic is a discussion about marzullin ulcer now you already know marzullin ulcer is a malignant ulcer okay it's a malignant ulcer uh, which develops in an old scar and it may degenerate or develop into square muscle carcinoma so in other sentence or in other word this a malignant type of ulcer which develops in old scar okay and it is a uh, actually if we take a histopathology from that area then squamous cell carcinoma would be there so what may be the cause of uh, marzullin ulcer if i ask that question you can easily say old burns scar okay. chronic osteomyelitis or any chronic type of wound or very old type of wound they may degenerate into marzullin ulcer or squamous cell carcinoma regarding the clinical feature it may occur many years after the scar formation quite logical isn't it because that's the criteria that's the definition of marzullin ulcer see that many years after the scar formation and uh, one of the very common cause is burns scar regarding the growth of marzullin ulcer it is very slow because there is less vascularity or no vascularity inside the scar it is painless condition because they don't have any nerves there there is no lymphatic metastasis because lymphatics are also destroyed and it is resistant to radiotherapy as a lack because of lack of vascularity so these are some of the important points regarding a marzullin's ulcer okay so let's move on now what investigation we like to do the investigation in this case is taking a biopsy and send that tissue for histopathology study and we will confirm this is a case of squamous cell carcinoma so that's the diagnosis regarding the management remember radiotherapy is useless here okay so the most important way is surgery we have to uh, excise a wide margin there wide 3d excision with a margin of 1 cm and followed by skin grafting that is the management 
Sometimes if ulcer is big and it present at distal parts of the limb. Okay, now see there. Sorry, if ulcer is big and present on the distal part of the limb, then we have to go for amputation. Where excision is not possible, then you have to go for amputation. Okay, so let me stop here for today.